Okay, so this is David with uh, Branson Solar. I also run the Ranger EV forum on Yahoo, so you can find that easily enough. It's for the Polaris Ranger electric vehicle. And uh, mine's a 2010 model. I've got some videos already up there on this channel, so if you uh, want to look over that and kind of see what this uh, unit is, a lot of people don't know about these EVs, but uh, I'll monitor this uh, other discussion group on, Pla on Polaris Rangers, uh, just the regular ones, and they have a branch that uh, deals with the EV specifically. And I noticed a few guys in there have had problems with these uh, Delta, uh, I guess they're just called Delta Q. They're out of, uh, I'll zoom into it, they're out of uh, Burnaby, Canada. And they make chargers uh, for various things. Ours is a 48 volt uh, battery system and this is uh, called a quick charger and this is what the inside of it looks like. The problem with these is that uh, the charging terminal and then we'll flip around and show it uh, on the side burns these pins up because the pins just really aren't big enough in, in my opinion for the amount of current they're pulling. So I want to show you what I did on mine to fix it and hopefully it is fixed. Uh, what I did is I added this terminal here you can see, okay, right here. Uh, these are the two wires, and I believe these are the uh, 13 and a half volt uh, signal that goes off through here, and it comes out this uh, plug here on the end, which we'll, we'll zoom over. At any rate, I uh, had a pin out, which is this red wire going down the bottom. It comes into this, this, uh, this is the back of the board right here. And it burns the pin, so uh, then you lose connection. When you lose connection, you lose the 13 volt feed over to your controller, and then uh, nothing works. Uh, the thing won't charge, and it won't do anything. So, and oh, I think you can barely see it over here. I think these are the 48 volt uh, connectors over here. But at any rate, so you burn a pin. So what I did is I basically made this little harness and I'll zoom out so you can see it better. I just kind of want to zoom in and show what I did there. What I did is I spliced into these two wires on the inside and right here where they connect to the board, I uh, soldered in this new connector and run a, cut a hole in the side, drill a hole in, put a little grommet here and just basically, I'll show you this harness. I basically just, uh, pulled a new harness in, tapped into those wires because the red wire where it goes down and out and through this connector is what's burnt up. So basically I've just uh, tapped into that and ran a couple extra wires. Now if you ask why I didn't just cut that and, and connect to these, it's because down below these actually go down and connect to a circuit board down there and then from there they come up and come into this connector. So. I didn't really know if I could just cut them and, and rerun them through this new harness or if uh, they need to go down there to the bottom since they go to a little circuit board and I wish I could have shown this all, when it was all apart. Basically I had to pull this board out. Let me zoom out a little bit more so you can kind of see it. I had to pull this board out right here which is, uh, well, maybe that's not far enough. How about that? All right. So I had to pull this board out to get uh, down into the bottom uh, where I could see uh, what it all looked like. Make sure there's no wires burnt down here on the bottom where this connects. And uh, so basically you pull these clips, there's screws in this board, and then you have to pull this bar here, slide this out. These are all heat sink uh, uh, voltage regulator transistors or something up here on the side. I'm not sure, power transistors. And there's a screw here, which you got that's easy to miss. But uh, then there's other screws that hold that board on. And then that doesn't really just pop out of there, but you got to wiggle a little bit, pull it out. When you get it out, uh, I also pulled this plug out, pulled all that out. And uh, it was kind of a job to get in there. But I checked it all out. And the back side of this, uh, basically, all this here on the back side, all these wires look okay. However, let me flip it around. You can see right there where the wire is burnt through, and that's a uh, just slightly. Hey, 
you go. Now that's the 13, what they call a 13 amp volt if you're looking at the wiring diagram. That one pin, apparently it just can't uh, carry the amperage. That pin, I believe, is the one that goes back to the controller and gives power to the controller. And without that 13 volts coming to the controller, the controller gives you an error and the, and the charger gives you an error, even if the charger actually works. And the thing is, I don't really know. I haven't plugged it into the uh, unit yet. But, uh, you know, all they can really sell you is uh, a whole new unit, which is $500 for a new charger. But that won't solve the problem because that pin damaged the, the uh, plug on the other side. So how do you deal with the plug? With the, it's all burnt up as well. All I can really do is cut the wire off of it. So that's what I'm going to do. And we'll do another video on the other side when I get to that. But I bought this little connector. This was actually, I got it from an R, uh, RC radio controlled airplane uh, dealer here that sells parts and stuff. And I got this. a nice little connector. It should, uh, it just comes like that. And then it comes with some extra pins. But it, it's uh, not waterproof. But you could just wrap some tape around or something. And that would be good enough. The main thing is it'll, it's bigger than the wires that were there and I think it'll uh, handle the power. So my uh, red wire down here is the one that's actually burnt and gone on the bottom there. So I'm going to start out just by cutting uh, on the other side. I think it's a uh, purple red I believe on the other side. I'm going to cut that one and just hook it up to the red wire here and see if just uh, bypassing that one wire, maybe all these other terminals are actually good. They look good on the other side of the plug, so maybe they're all good. But you can see how small those plugs are now. Zoom in a little bit, and I'm gonna put this up in HD so you can... Maybe that didn't work as good as I thought. Just back up. But there's the 48 volt uh, plug. And I think you can see the little sticker on it right below. Actually, uh, sorry, that's the DC to DC output on that side. It says 13 and a half volts at 30 amps maximum. But, you know, to me, it doesn't really make sense. Why would you have 13 volts at 30 amps on the charger? If you look at what the charger says, Just spin that around. I think we can see that. All right, you look at it, and it says right on it. Uh, well, it takes in 110 volts. Charger output 48 volts at 18 amps. So why would you put 40? You got to be putting 48 volts back into the batteries because they're 48 volt battery packs. So why would you have a 13 amp, I mean a 13 volt at, at that high of an amperage connection? I don't know. I mean, uh, I can't check the voltage. I was just looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, well that has to be the 48 volt. But at any rate, I think it's the purple wire. I'll have to check that. When we get to the harness uh, video, I just wanted to show you what the inside of this thing looks like. It actually looks like a very good unit. Uh, hopefully that's not too much sun. But, uh, yeah, the inside of it, it looks, uh, it looks good, but those pinouts are just too small for the amount of power that's coming through it. So they, I think I should have just put some bigger plugs on the end of it. And I, there's tons of these things out there. So I don't know. Uh, I've read I don't know how many different people that have had the same problem with these wires burn up. Well, if they're burning up, it's because the plugs probably are not big enough on the pins on there. Just not big enough. And they should put some heavier duty uh, pinouts. But uh, whatever. So... We'll put it on and then we'll try it out and then I'll do another video and we'll show uh, what I have to do on the wire side to make it work. But at the moment I'm just planning on cutting that one wire that's burnt and run it through this new little harness. And uh, basically you can see I just spliced them right on the board. So it was uh, probably uh, overkill, but uh, the connection's good, shouldn't have a problem. And uh, if uh, I find out that that's all that really is uh, wrong, then 
<coughs> technically somebody could just instead of taking that apart just pull those red that red and that black and cut them and solder all that together without taking anything else apart and maybe they could uh, effect a fix uh, a little bit easier than what I did but it really wasn't that bad it just took a little while so at any rate that's uh, all I got today and then I'll do a follow-up video on the EV side thanks